Yo, what is up, everyone? How we doing? Hello. Um, welcome back to AIA, the second reinstatement of online um, Tuesday nights. Um, we're excited to be back. We're excited for another semester, and we're excited you came tonight. Um, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, I am Becca Poljan. I am a senior on the volleyball team. And I am Nick Williams. I am a senior on the tennis team. Awesome. And yeah, we're just excited to see you guys all here tonight. Um, if, if this is your first time, AIA is just a group of uh, Christian collegiate athletes just talking about life, um, talking about God and how it all fits together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. And then tonight we got a fun evening planned for us. We're going to start off with an icebreaker. Then we got a couple sets of speakers, some baseball guys that are going to um, share, share some stories with us as well as a, a guest speaker later on. But first we um, we're going to start out with an icebreaker, but like it, but like I said, yeah, Becca said, it kind of stinks that we're on Zoom um, back again. Always nice to be in person um, and, and see everyone. But at the same time, being online has given us like a lot of opportunities in the past. I remember a few years ago, um, or I guess maybe even just last year when we were on Zoom, we got to hear uh, stories from people all over the world and the country. Um, I remember in particular hearing uh, Lamoris Crawford share with us was um, was a great time. So Zoom also does give us some pretty darn great opportunities. Um, but yeah, so for uh, tonight, like every AIA, we are going to start off with an icebreaker. So DJ Danny Barth is going to set us up. Uh, if you don't remember um how to annotate best learn now check the top of your screen a little top down action but we this is our first meeting back since christmas break so we are curious where did you send spend your christmas break so annotate throw some uh uh, we already got some hooligans carson <laughs> parker throwing stuff down at the bottom of the map but throw a little dot on where you got to go this christmas break want to see that map like, that globe where did you where did you personally go i was back in terrible ohio because everyone in michigan hates ohio uh, i don't i don't necessarily hate ohio where is that the only place that i went i was only in ohio you're only in ohio no sad indiana break. no a sad break that's tough a sad break personally i went to baltimore nice. I, I also went to ohio um and then michigan for me but it looks like we got some floridas oh we got some emily, emily russia did okay. you go there for a training trip maybe um for rowing that maybe and cameron needs help annotating there should be a drop down feature at the top um of your screens uh so that's the I best i can help with it, that's india right who is just is circling is am i correct in that no, my geography is a little oh, we got nink up in europe I love to see oh, that. Oh, yes. Looks like someone was out in Southern California, Los Angeles. Ooh. Shout out to uh, Mr. Farai Mutatu, who will be spending some time there. <laughs> Round of the applause future. for Mr. Mutatu, everybody. If you could just put it in the chat. We're so proud of him. So proud of him. Turn on your cameras, you fools. That sounds like. Oh, that sounds like a reminder to turn on your cameras. We'd love to see your beautiful faces um shameless plug right there thank you for whoever put that in there Djokovic in Australia yeah, <laughs> he, he is in Australia oh where is that where is that little star where is that uh, what what islands is that I don't even want to guess and I don't even know over by Australia I'm everybody see that embarrass myself okay also which that. one's I, I, Iceland and then Greenland Greenland's a smaller one right oh yeah okay we got some in Iceland Fuji Oh yeah, Philly G. Wait, I don't even know. Indonesia. Maybe it's something like that. Fancy there you schmancy. Go. Very fancy. Love to see Not as fancy as Ohio. Not as fancy as Ohio. Mm, no. Thailand. Oh, did he actually? Yes, they did go to Thailand. Wow. That is so cool. Yes, it is. I wish I was in Thailand. Jeez. Probably Gee. warmer there than it is here. Yeah. Shout out negative degrees. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mark Vader, for putting that up. Glad to see that everybody had a fun and hopefully safe winter break. Got to see families and whatnot. So, but we're glad to have you back. We're glad to be back with our AIA fam. Um, so just a few announcements before we get into the night. Um, so 
this is an open skate at Mun Ice Arena. Um, so it's open to the general public, but we're gonna try and get a lot of AIA people there. So Friday night at 9.30, there is a small fee um, for people, um, for just like students and whatnot. But um, I know everybody got their Christmas money when they got when they got their cards for Christmas, you do the little shaky shake to look for the money and whatnot. Anyway, um, <laughs> come out for uh, Friday night um, ice skating with AIA and some other um, MSU people who come in. It'll be a good time. It will be a good time. Also, second announcement, um, we are starting a co-ed Bible study this semester. So this is just a really cool way for a bunch of different teams to connect. Um, yeah, get in the words together and just spend some more time together. Um, I know that we last semester had a lot of team Bible studies, but we didn't necessarily get a chance to just all be one and have a Bible study during the week. So that will be on the 27th at 7 p.m. And then we'll just keep on. That'll be the last Thursday of every month. And then we'll just notify you guys with the time. Um, right now for this one, it's 7 p.m. Yeah, looking forward to that. Those are always really fun. Um, another awesome event coming up. Oh, AJ still found that annotation. Let's go. All right. Mm -hmm. So another fun event coming up. Um, just one week from tonight, um, we have a very special guest speaker coming in. Between the two of us, we got five Olympic medals. Um, this dude is a swimmer, a swim and diver. Let's go. Um, and so he got three golds, two silvers in the 96 and 2000 uh, Olympic Summer Games. Mr. Josh Davis will be joining us over Zoom uh, one week from tonight. So make sure uh, to come on out uh, one week from tonight because that'll be a very special message. Not every day we get to hear from an Olympian. And we already got to hear from one last fall, or in the fall. So yeah, pretty lucky. cool that we get to listen to two Olympians. A lot yeah. of wisdom. Yes, we are very lucky. Um, so yeah, that's all we've got as far as announcements goes this week. Um, so now we get to um, hear from some baseball boys. So we're going to send it over to them live, um, coming from Caleb Sleeman's freshly renovated basement. Um, got lots of fun, Let's go. fun games down there. But um, no, we got Trent Christian Bryan for the baseball team. Um, they're going to be sharing uh, some stories on how they've grown in faith um, recently. And uh, yeah, again, really enjoyed getting to know them this semester in person. So, um, Caleb, handing it off to you. Big sleeve awesome. basement. Thanks, Nick and Becca. Um, yeah, thanks so much for um, just giving us the opportunity to share. So, like they said, we've got Christian, Brian, and Trent here. Um, and so, yeah, just to start off, why don't you guys, for people who don't know you, share your name, where you're from, and a little bit of your spiritual background. I can go first. Uh, my name is Christian Williams. Uh, obviously, I play baseball here, but I'm from Indiana originally. Kind of moved around a lot my whole life. But in terms of my faith, I've been fortunate enough to uh, grow up in a house that uh, follows Christ uh, quite closely. Uh, my parents are both Christians. Um, they have been for a long time. They brought me and my brothers up uh, like that. So I grew up going to church. Uh, grew up going to Bible studies, youth groups, and all of that. And I really thank my parents for that. It's it's meant a lot. It's helped me grow my faith. Since I've been young. Um, I'm Brian Brecker. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and I was baptized in a Catholic church when I was a baby, and I attended Catholic services my whole life. Um, and then in, when I was in eighth grade, my family started going to a non denominational church, and we've been going there ever since. So I kind of converted to non denominational, I guess. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so I'm Trent Farquhar. I'm a junior here, second year at Michigan State University. Um, I'd say, much like Brian, uh, my family's non-denominational. Um, kind of bounced around a few churches. Uh, grew up pretty close uh, to the Lord, but we didn't get to go to church as much as we'd like to based on sports and stuff like that. Um, but still, um, grew up in a Christian home. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, coming into college can be kind of a scary thing sometimes why don't you guys share a little bit about stuff that maybe you were current you were concerned about coming to msu um and and just some of the stuff surrounding that yeah i know for me uh it was a little bit scary kind of hearing stories about college i had you know people in front of me that i was friends with that were older that were 
either in college or had graduated and they were like, it's crazy. You, you know, playing sports, you have no time to do anything. You're always busy. You're always tired. You know, school kicks your butt and all this kind of stuff. And it was a little bit overwhelming, you know, before I got there, just thinking about uh, all the stuff that I had to go through. And then, you know, I didn't really know if the, uh, the scene here for churches and youth groups and things like that. And so that was also a scary thing to think like, hey, I, I might be alone, you know, when I get up there. And so that was, you know, one of the concerns I had. Um, for me, my recruiting process was very stressful for me. Um, I was starting to get deadlined by a lot of schools and being rushed to make a decision. And I was like, I don't know where I want to go. Like, I don't know what's best. And I just remember being so stressed out, praying to God every single day, like every single second, like, God, just tell me where you want me to be. Like, I want to be where you want me to go. And I was like, I don't know. And I just felt like pushed to go to Michigan State. And I made the call, commit to Michigan State. And after the phone call, I was still like, well, <laughs> what if I made the wrong decision? What if this isn't where I'm supposed to be? And I think just being here with my teammates here, Sleeman and um, just everyone on the call, even if I don't know you, just being surrounded by other believers and people and athletes at school, like that's just an answer to my prayer. Definitely didn't happen overnight. It took me like the year and a half from when I committed to getting here to like realize this was a community I had, but yeah, I'm, it's definitely an answer to my prayer. Yeah, for me, I really didn't know what to expect. Uh, came from, uh, maybe some of you know, some of you don't. I transferred from a smaller school, Bowling Green State University in Ohio because our program got cut. So coming here, I didn't really know what to expect. I kind of had stopped out a little bit. As, was I good enough to play here? Was I going to make friends here? Was I, was I going to enjoy my time? But uh, soon enough, I uh, honestly found you guys at AIA and uh, some of my prayers were answered and uh, just speaking with my family and stuff like that. And with the help of you guys, just having peers that believe in the same thing and just know, like Ryan said, not being alone um, with the other athletes, Christian athletes was a huge thing for me. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, like what, were, what are maybe some things, maybe some tough things that you guys have gone through while you've been here and just the impact that that's, you know, being alongside even teammates who, you know, maybe don't want to do the same stuff that, you know, necessarily college has to offer or something like that, or, or maybe a trial that you've been through and what kind of impact it's had having guys alongside you to go through that with. Yeah, I mean, obviously everyone here knows, you know, the struggles and the temptations and all the things that go along with college and, you know, it's hard, you know, I, I make mistakes every day and, you know, I'm going to continue to make mistakes because I'm a sinner, but mm -hmm. um, having AIA and guys like Brian and Trent and other guys in the baseball team that, you know, can't be here right now or on Zoom, it's, it's huge, you know, the Bible says, or bad company corrupts good morals, it doesn't say, you know, good, corrupt, but good company, you know, uh, changes bad morals, so that's one thing my parents have preached to me since I've been a kid, and so, Having guys like this around me, having Sleeman, having Bible studies, getting plugged into churches, it's been huge to, you know, overcome those challenges and to try to get better every day. Mm -hmm. I'd say for me, the biggest struggle I faced was dealing with COVID last year. Just always, I had COVID, was put into quarantine, they got contact trace after that and put into <laughs> quarantine again. So just like... <laughs> Dealing with that and like, God, why am I, why am I going through this? And just trusting him through all that process. And then, but definitely like Christian was talking about, just having um, others, like surrounding yourself with other believers and people you can count on. And like, it's all put up in all the weight rooms, iron sharp, or iron sharpens iron. So if you surround yourself with people that are going to sharpen you and you can sharpen them, then we can grow together. So. Yeah, I'm just going to piggyback off what those two guys said. Like, I think going off Christian, like some temptations of sin, it's it's hard. I mean, it's real. I mean, I've, all of you guys experience it. I experience it. These guys do. It's it's all real. But knowing that other people are going through it together um, really helps me kind of get through that. And uh, Christian and I went to a passion conference um, down in Atlanta, which I highly recommend if you guys have the opportunity to go. But um they're saying that there's no condemnation in the eyes of the Lord. So he's going to take everything away from you and uh, it's, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. And that verse you're talking about, Romans 8, chapter 1, says, for now there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And that's like the most freeing thing that we can hear, right? So 
what would maybe be a piece of advice that you would give to someone who's like, man, I don't, I don't know if I feel like I have that kind of community or what, what do I do to like mm -hmm. get around people like that? Yeah. Talk to people, ask, you know, ask questions, try to, you know, find people you enjoy because, you know, we're going to do our best to try to reach out to you and help you and make you feel welcome. But, you know, we want you to, you know, let us know that, Hey, you know, I, I don't have, you know, friends that follow Christ. You know, I don't feel like I have that community. I'm not in a Bible study. I don't have a church. You know, we, you know, these people like Hale, they have all the resources to, to help you, to encourage you, and to make you, to help you grow, and, you know, to make you strong in your faith, and to make you have a, a better time while you're here, you know. Ever since I've started to hang out with this guy more and these guys doing this type of thing, it's it's made college that much better for me. And so, you know, it's, you know, we want to help you. We want to be there for you. We want to you know, see all of you guys grow in your faith just like we have. Yeah, I agree. Um... I would just to add on to that, I guess, don't be ashamed or nervous to like ask for help because we all need each other. We need people to push mm -hmm. us and grow together. And yeah, I don't know, we're all, this is what like AI is meant to be for. Like we're here for each other to support each other. So I know Sleeman's been huge in my growth and in my faith and my teammates and everyone. So we're all here for each other. So reach out. Yeah, I would just say seek God out uh, every opportunity you can because you never know who's going to walk in, walk in your door of your life um, when you're seeking him because he's going to bring the right people into your life. Like these guys, like, I mean, two years ago, I, these guys are complete strangers to me. Like and now I'm sitting in the basement preaching, preaching God's good word with them. So um, just seek as many opportunities as you can, and he's going he's gonna to bless you for it. Awesome. Well, I hope that's an encouragement to you guys. Um, I know these guys have been an encouragement to me, certainly. So throwing it back over to Becca and Nick. Thank you. Thank you, Big Slee. No, a lot of things stood out to me there. Yeah, boys, thank you so much for sharing. Really appreciate you guys. Um, a couple of things that stood out to me. Number one, the power of prayer, hearing about how you guys were able to turn to prayer um, in times of uncertainty and uh, difficulty is awesome because we have a God that, wants to be in relationship with us that wants to hear from us that wants us to pray bold prayers um and and ask him and rely on his wisdom and not on our own understanding and so that's really encouraging um to me to hear um, additionally to um hearing that even in high school uh, how, how you guys were um leaning on your faith um and that's really encouraging to me because as someone that um, didn't come to know Christ until college, like it's all still pretty darn new to, new to me, and so it's just really encouraging to hear that, like even even young young dudes in high school are uh, are, are kind of like going against the mold and and not afraid to to lean on their faith. Um, so guys, appreciate you for them. Um, yeah, now moving on, uh, we get um, to hear from our uh, our speaker Philly G tonight, uh, hopefully. Um, he is in uh, good enough shape after a uh, UC grad himself after his Bearcats lost in a uh, tough loss a few weeks ago to <laughs> the Alabama Crimson Tide. Ho hopefully he's uh, just found the emotional wherewithal to, to pull <laughs> together a speech for us tonight. But Philly G, uh, take, in, take it away. Looking forward to hearing what you got for us. Yeah, I am an alum. I mean, it's not like I follow them that closely, but, <laughs> but I appreciate the... Uh, the sympathies. So, uh, it's, man, it's great to see everybody. Welcome to Throwback Virtual Spartan Chapel. Wow, this is um, reminds me of the spring, and now here we are. Uh, but I'm I'm so glad you guys took the time uh, to come out, you know, tonight and to dial in. So excited for what the Lord's uh, going to teach us. And so I just wanted to thank the baseball guys uh, for, man, thanks for sharing, guys. It, I know those are real words. Um, for what God's doing in your life. Uh, trust me, as a dude who has lived longer than you, you're so wise to make those choices now. So we're super proud of you. And I don't know if you guys agree with me, but I would say that those guys have some of the best hair in AIA. Do I have an amen? Do I have a witness? Do I have hands, annotations? <laughs> you guys have great hair. So um, 
but hey, uh, happy belated New Year. And uh, I, I would love to hear, are there any highlights? Does anybody have a, a highlight to share from, uh, from their, their New Year or break experience? We've got a few people who want to share anything. Oh, all the girls and Emily Carlos. I see all lots of hands. I see that hand. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for wanting to share. <laughs> so nobody's going to share anything. I have COVID. Okay. Thank you, Cam. Cam has COVID. Oh, little Cam and her COVIDness. Okay. Okay. Cam has COVID. Anybody else have any life changing events happen? Um, I got to watch my brother on TV get activated for the first time playing a, his first NFL game. Nice. Yeah. Very exciting. That's awesome. Congratulations. So cool. That must be fun for your family. Okay. One more. I got a black eye during skiing and I have a hole in my shin. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> because I thought I could fly. Praise but I the Lord. <laughs> black. Okay. So a black eye and you have a hole in your shin. Like, like there's a hole in your bone. Yeah. You kind of saw my bone, but I'm okay. I can walk. Okay. So a hole that exposed your bone. Yeah. All right. That was Dutch. Tough cookies. Uh, by the way, you have great tasting butter cookies over there. I love Dutch treats, Bonquet and stuff like that. Um, so, okay. So highlights for, uh, for me, all the kids were home. I know that's such a dad thing to say. Like, trust me, when you're, when you're one, when you're a dad or a mom, you're like, you love having the kids home. Uh, baby Aria, granddaughter was home. Super awesome. Probably the biggest highlight was my oldest daughter, Rachel, got engaged. Woohoo! So we have a wedding in Montana this September. So it'll be super fun for our family. But um, uh, yeah, we had a great break. And of course, we're in January, which means people are making their resolutions and we're all making our plans, right? For the year, all the goals. So Julie and I are trying to find some time where we can start making plans together. And one of the things that we love to do, uh, no shocker, is we love to travel. And so there's usually more places or things to do and go. So we have to plan those out on the calendar. And as we're kind of thinking about, okay, what are we going to do for our plans? It reminded me of when the kids were all younger and we used to all pack in the minivan in the car and we drive across America to Colorado on our way to the ultimate training camp. Woo! Which we have like 17 already signed up. So quickly sign up or you're going to be on the outside looking in. Uh, so we would, we would go, but of course, driving across America, you can't do it in a day. So we'd stay at a hotel. So I don't know if you're resonating with this, but it's very, very exciting times for kids. We stay at the hotel. What is the favorite thing to do at the hotel? Run up and down the hallways. Ding dong ditch. The, yes. Those are awesome and amazing. Got to go swimming. Philly. Yes. I would want to say, is, are, is running down the hallway the funnest thing? No, I would think the funnest thing is pool time, right? Like you're tired from the car, you, you, you go change into your swimming gear and you get into the pool. So we'd hit the pool. And of course, when the kids are younger, they are just diving and splashing, having a ton of fun. But they would love to run off the edge of the pool and jump on me, right? There's like a Dr. Seuss book called Hop on Bop perfect example right and like and they got so confident in doing this they would do it when i when i wouldn't even be looking and it's like okay so why would they do that they knew well at that age right i could do no wrong i could lift anything right i was dad strong powerful but they knew that i was capable to hold them that i loved them and that i wouldn't let them fall and so they would jump off of the edge and they would experience like epic joy in, in, in the day. It was, it was awesome. Life was great when they would do that. Conversely, when one of the kids would be afraid, maybe it'd be in the deeper end, they'd sit on the side of the pool and they would calculate it out and they'd think about jumping and they would never jump and they wouldn't experience the great pool time that I had in mind for them. I was, I was thinking through those memories, those fun family memories, the Lord kind of hit me. It's like, you know what? This is so much 
so much like life. You know, God has set up the Christian life and life in general that if I look to him and I trust him and I jump, life is awesome. Life is good. It's scary sometimes. I'm out of control, but I leave the safe place and I, and I, and I go where he wants me to go. But on the other side of things, sometimes I like to play it safe in life, right? We, we all are there, whether we're in group situations or with our sport, we figure out what we're good at, what we're not good at, and we stay in the safe zone. And we, and we don't take steps of faith. We, 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 we calculate a way where we can, quote unquote, win in life. And the result is that it's not very fun. It's not very exciting <laughs> to follow the Lord when I don't trust him enough to jump. Last semester, and this is why I bring this up, last semester we talked about being anchored on the rock and that the storms of life are coming and everything changes in life and sometimes we feel adrift. It's great to be anchored to the rock. There's security, there's safety, there's meaning, there's purpose. But sometimes we can be happy just to sit on the rock and be chained to it. And if we're really honest, Sometimes we feel it's kind of constricting and it's maybe not all that fun. And yet God wants us not to be chained or anchored to the rock. So we just have a mediocre life, but the rock is always meant to be a launch pad, right? In life, when I look to God and all that he is and see that I can boldly come to where he's beckoning me because he will provide, he will catch me. He will love me. That's when life gets exciting, when we jump. I'm going to use the jumping analogy, and I'm going to pivot it and use running, because the Bible talks more about running than jumping. But jumping and trusting God or running in life after what he wants us to is what he's designed us for. And so that's what we're going to be talking about for a good portion of this semester. There's a great verse in Psalms. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have it on PowerPoint, but it's Psalm 119, verse 32, if you want to write it down and look at it later, if somebody wants to put it in the group chat. Psalm 119, 32 says this, I run in the path of your commands, for you have set my heart free. Did you catch that? I run in the path of your commands. If we're honest, we usually think commands aren't freeing and they're not fun. It's like, dang it, I got to do this and I don't get to do that. But the Bible says that in light of who God is and what he's done for us, when I follow his commands, when I go after him, I can run. Why? Because he has set my heart free. So we're going to be talking about Running to win. That's our theme. Run to win. And it works really nice with the uh, the Olympics that are coming up. So, uh, Daniel, I have a picture of the Olympics here, I think, on the PowerPoint. Right? Don't we all long for those moments when, like, our guys win? You know, and it's just like they're awestruck. This dude, I don't I forget his name, but he's, like, bawling his eyes out. Right? Because inside, we were meant to experience glory epicness, joy, satisfaction, and they're getting just a little glimpse and a taste of it here. And so I can't wait for the Olympics, right? Um, but God has this theme in the Bible, actually. He picks up on this, and this is what we're going to look at tonight. So the Bible talks about running the race of life. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. So give you a moment to find that in your Bible. Look it up on your phone. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. And uh, the Apostle Paul is the writer. This right here is my lovely map of Greece. And if you can see right in the middle is the city of Corinth. So just to give you a little context, Corinth was a very important city in Greece. Probably the second most important other than Athens. Sorry, Sparta. <laughs> but Corinth was really important. And it was located on this little, uh, there we go, a little section. I don't know if you can see my, uh, my uh, pointer here, but this is called an isthmus. 
when you have a large piece of land and it gets really small and you got water on either side and the, lar the land gets large again. Corinth was a port city, uh, big in training, uh, or trading, big sailor town, pretty immoral town. Uh, a lot of philosophy and a lot of uh, uh, fresh current thoughts there. About 500,000 people lived there. And since it was the second most important city in Greece, and since the Greeks loved to play games, right, the Olympic Games, they had these games in Corinth called the Isthmian Games. Now, don't try to say that with a mouthful of peanut butter, because you probably won't pronounce it right, right? But the, the Isthmian Games, the Isthmian Games. And they would be played every two years. And the sports, of course, they would play are like running, wrestling, shout out, Otis and Rayvon, uh, boxing, so forth. Uh, and so they, so what Paul does is, the Bible is so cool with this. They take analogies that the readers could understand and they make points with it. So Paul picks up on this theme of the games. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he is going to, um, he's going to talk about this. So, But before I read, I'm going to pray for us so that the next few minutes that we would really have teachable hearts. And that's including myself. What God, what do you want to teach me? today? How do you want to transform my heart? So let's pray, okay? Father, uh, boy, you are a really good father. Um, intellectually, I know you're a good father. I know intellectually that your plans are better than mine. Intellectually, I know that you love me, that you're strong, that you're powerful. And yet too often, God, I find myself by the side of the pool wanting to be in control, thinking that if I define the terms of my life, of pool time, that I will have more fun, that I will get ahead. And the truth is, is I miss out. Lord, we're all in this boat. So would you, by your Holy Spirit, shine the light upon your word into our souls? And would you illuminate our hearts? Would you begin to transform our hearts? Would you convict our hearts? Because I know there's things in my life that probably need changing. And there's things that I need to do and things that I need to trust and believe. And so, Father, in a time of the year when we are so quick to fill up our planners with our own plans, may we open up our hands and surrender them to you. Surrender the plans to you. And, uh, yeah, be willing to follow you. In Christ's name, amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. Paul says this. By the way, those are some authentic, genuine Corinthian columns you just saw in that picture mm, there they are it's a real place so uh starting in verse 24 do you not know that in a race all the runners run but only one gets the prize run in such a way as to get the prize next slide please everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training they do it to get a crown that will not last but we do it to get a crown, not a crow, we get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will be, not be disqualified for the prize. My apologies about the misspellings there. But here's what we're going to do. In this small passage, I'm going to pull out just three simple things that will be great reminders for us about God wants to teach us on this topic. So here it is. First one, okay? There is a race to be run. There's a race to be run. The Bible says, do you not know that in a race, all the runners run? Everyone in life, guys, runs a race. Very similar to when we talked about last semester, when Jesus says, build your house on the rock, not the sand. Everybody in life builds. So it's not a question of whether or not you think you're running. The question is, what race are you running and what are you chasing? That's the real question that we have in life. So you need to know that. Number one, there's a race to be run and you're in it right now. Number two, 
There's a prize to be won. Don't you like that? There's a race to be run. There's a prize to be won. I worked hard at that. It does the rhyme. There's a prize to be won. So what was the prize of the Isthmian Games? I mean, like, what did they get back then? Here's what they got. The athletes trained and completed, or uh, competed much like today for the applause of the crowd. That was the first thing, right? They'd stand before the judge, what was called the Bema seat, and one would get the prize and they competed for that praise. But here's the second thing that they competed for. They competed for a wreath. A wreath. And that wreath would have been made out of pine and pine cones or celery. So imagine you work hard and here's your crown. I don't know if this is going to stay. I don't know if my ears are big enough, right? There's your crown. You get celery. And you'd be like, you'd be like big man on campus walking around because people knew you won and and there you were with your, your celery wreath on. So that's what they competed for. Now, question is, is did it last? Did the prize that they were after last? I submit no. Here's why. And you know this to be true because your refrigerator has this as well. You go to Whole Foods or Meyer or whatever. Your students and have less money. You go to Meyer, not Whole Foods, right? And and you buy produce. Well, guess what happens after the produce has been in the fridge for a while? Little brown stuff starts to grow, right? So they'd be wearing their crown, right? But after a while, it'd get brown and wilt, and eventually it was gone. So that was the prize that they ran for in the Isthmian Games. But what's the prize that God tells us to run after? First and foremost, God tells us that we get him. More than do we get this or that and that, we get God. We get what our souls have always longed for. It's January. February's not here. You know, February, Valentine's Day and relationships, right? We all were made for relationships. And we're always looking for someone who knows us completely and will accept us. Someone who can fix our problems in life. Somebody who will never leave us. Well, in theology, we call that um, omniscience. You're everywhere, or you know everything about me, and yet you still accept me. Omnipotence, you're all powerful, God, and you can fix anything. And you're omnipresent, or uh, omnipresent. You'll never, ever leave me where I'm at. You know everything, you can fix everything, and you'll never leave me. What our souls are looking for is God. That's what they're after. And in the gospel, God takes me because of my sin and you criminals, offenders of God's holy and righteous law, right? We want to be our own gods. And he offers us forgiveness and salvation and gives us a brand new resume that we can be accepted by him. Or what he offers, he offers us that. He offers us the eternal life. I have a list. He offers us total forgiveness, eternal life, glory, do you know why you love competing in sports? One of the reasons why? Come on. You, you know that last second win? Did you ever like rush the court or rush the field or anything like that? Remember that? Can we get back to the uh, the faces, Dan? That'd be awesome. Oh, no, no. The faces of the people off the PowerPoint. If, they, if you can do that, that'd be great. I like looking at all the, all the people. Well, yeah, the people are back, right? There's my people. Um, glory. Have you ever rushed? Have you ever rushed the court or experienced something like that? I can remember. Um, oh, here's a good one. Uh, 2015 football season, right? We're in Ann Arbor, mm, playing Michigan, and uh, you know, doing chapel for the team on the sidelines during the game. And like, oh my gosh, there's 10 seconds left in the game. <laughs> ah, we need a miracle, right? And then the punt happens. You know, and he scores, or, you know, whatever that guy says on there, right? And we win. I wish you could jump inside my body and experience the euphoria of running onto the field, standing on the big yellow M and looking around at 100,000 people like, you know, codfish, right? Just, it, it was, it was unbelievable and euphoric. 
what that was, was just a tiny, small taste of glory. You were made for that level of glory and satisfaction and joy. But guess what? That was 2015. It's flipping 2022 now. That's just a distant memory that didn't last. I'm elaborating on this for so long because this is so real. What God offers us, guys, is infinite joy and the glory that he is embedded into winning, that he's embedded into sex, that he's embedded into sunsets, that he's embedded into all of these created things. He is the end of it. And this is what he offers to us. So review, there's a race to be run. run. There is a prize to be won. And the prize that God offers is something that you were created for. Last one is this. Uh, there is work to be done. There is work to be done. There's a race to be run, brothers and sisters. There's a prize to be won. There's work to be done. It says here, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. So talk to me here real fast, okay? Crowd participation. What does it cost you to be an athlete and compete? What does it cost you? What do you have to give up? What do you have to do? Some verbal voices here. Time. Time. It costs you your time. What else? I'm about to participate so yeah. good. Yeah, Mental health, physical health, talent, determination, money, love, or happiness. Happiness. <laughs> It's like they pulled out the machine gun of responses. And just <laughs> me. But, we just turned our mic on. Wow. Wow. Okay. Like the Hoover Dam exploding. A choreocopia of responses. Absolutely. Right. You got to sacrifice fun. Everybody else is going in and hanging out or, you know, going to the movie. What are you doing? Oh, to pump iron. Right. Or, yes, it, all of that. It, it, it causes you like Twinkies right? You have to eat different food. It, 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 you lose rest. Um, sometimes it costs you friendships, right? It costs you a lot to be an athlete. So here's, here's the point of what's going on. The Bible says there's, there's work to be done, but the prize is worth it. He sets up in this verse, he's basically saying, look, all the athletes, okay, right? Maybe we're more advanced. We got more toys and whistles, but they worked hard back then, right? They're running around with their rocks. They're doing whatever, right? They're working out hard. The athletes beat their bodies to a pulp. They throw up. They, they, they miss out on all this other stuff. For what? Celery. Romaine, if you want, right? Think about it. You, you spend your life beating yourself to a pulp to get a crown. I've even got pine cones. I've got it all. It, a crown that won't last. Now, disclaimer, there's nothing wrong with the crown. You don't feel that you shouldn't compete because it's not going to last. I didn't say that. The Bible's not saying that. Competing is awesome, right? That's why we're all here. We love athletics. But when it becomes the thing, when winning becomes the, the prize, 64 font italicized bowl. When it becomes everything, you and I are giving your one life over to something that won't last. When we start meeting in person again at the Scandalaires, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Look at the old dudes on the wall, the guys who are dead. They had girlfriends, right? They had parents, they had aspirations and dreams and they worked their butt off for something. And guess what? They're gone and nobody thinks about them at all right? It fades away. When I start to understand that, God gets my attention. The Bible says, if we beat our bodies to a pulp just to gain something that won't fade, how much more should I go into training, cross training, right? Spiritual training to, to prepare myself to, to to be transformed more into the image of God, to reflect my heavenly father, to experience what he has for me in life. I'm telling you guys, any dead fish can float down the dead cedar. I mean, the red cedar, any fish can float down it. It takes a live one to swim up it. 
right? To get to a place where you thought you'd never be takes nothing. You just have to float and tube down the river of despair, right? But if you want to follow the Lord and be a different fish, running the race that he's after is what he has is invited us to do. I'm going to skip uh, another verse in 2 Corinthians. Well, now I'll read it. It's only two verses. Daniel, can you put up 2 Corinthians 5, 9 through 10? So this is in the next book of Corinthians that Paul wrote. He says, so in light of right, all of this truth, so we make it our goal to please him. Why? For we must all appear before the judgment seat. In the original Greek language, it was bima seat. It was the actual seat that the Greek athletes stood before. We must all before the bima seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body whether good or bad, we have an opportunity to invest our one quickly fading life for something that will last beyond romaine and celery. I love C.S. Lewis. Those of you who know me know that he's one of my faves. And this is one of my favorite quotes. Some of you maybe have heard it before, but it's worth repeating. It's in the book called The Weight of Glory. And in The Weight of Glory, he picks up on what I was talking about on how we were made for glory. There's, it's the inward pointer that shows us there's something more that all these other things don't seem to satisfy and give us. So he says this, he says, I think we got this on the, uh, on the PowerPoint. This will be much better to, to read on the PowerPoint than just listening here, we'll pull it up here. He says this, indeed, when we consider the unblushing promises of reward, and the staggering nature of the rewards promised in the Gospels. It would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures fooling around with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered to us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot understand what is meant by an offer of a holiday by the sea. We are far too easily pleased, he goes on to say. The Lord offers, offers us the holiday by the sea. It doesn't mean life will be easy, right? But he offers us life with him. And yet sometimes Philly just wants to sit in the sandbox, keep making mud pies because, oh, I know so much better than the Lord. I stay on the side of the pool and I don't jump so my challenge to you guys is this do you want to run do you want to jump do you want to run to win not just to get a participation award but to run to win the prize that he has join us join with me and not settling for average or mediocre with the lord right just as you physically get yourself trained and fit Join with me in getting spiritually fit. What do I need the nutrients? What do I need to be eating spiritually? What do I need to get rid of in my body and in my spiritual life that's harmful? How am I exercising spiritually? How am I mentally focused? Am I getting the type of soul rest that God desires for me, right? You see the parallels. So it's going to be very practical over the next few weeks as we approach the Olympics we're going to be talking about how do we run to win. And so I want to encourage you just as a shout out, I mentioned UTC earlier, but I can't think of a better, more practical way for you to run to win than to go to the ultimate training camp. I can't think of anything better. If you want to make strides towards the life that God has for you, if you're able to come I guarantee you the reason that would make you not want to come is not greater than the rewards that you get for going, right? We get it. Sometimes things come up, you can't change and alter, right? Like being chosen in the 21st pick of the MLS draft. We get it, right? But most of us aren't being chosen in the first round. And most of us have maybe the opportunity to do that. So just a little shout out. That's all I got to share with you guys tonight, but we need each other. Okay, this is not just a woohoo, let's try harder spiritually. You and I can't do it on our own. We need 
the Holy Spirit of God working in our life, and he will use each other in each other's lives so that we can do this, okay? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the wonderful truth, and thank you that you don't just tell us to run and watch from a distance. You run with us. You enable us to run, and you allow us to run together, and we're so grateful for that, God. Thank you for my brothers and sisters here. God, may your word have been honored tonight. Thank you for its simplicity and clarity. May our hearts respond to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Billy G, um, for that great message. Yeah, I see some people giving a round of applause. Um, yeah, no, what you said, it's so easy to just stay in our comfort zones. It's so easy to just stay in our sandbox where we know what's going to happen. We know everything that's going to happen, but yeah, it's so easy to just stay there, but the Lord calls us out of that. And like you said, we also need community to do that. So going back to what the baseball guy said, like they've grown so much because they've had each other as well. And like, just as much as like, we, we also, we need the spirit. We need to be praying. We need to be doing stuff, but also like joining community because we can like spur each other on in faith and whatnot. So that's, that's really awesome. Um, Thank you so much for that. A verse that kind of came up when you were saying that is the first Timothy four, um, eight, um, that says for while bodily training is of, of some godly, all right, sorry, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way as it holds promise for the present life, but also for the life to come. And I think that's a really, um, good verse that just points back to like physical training is super valuable, but also, um, just godliness is valuable in every way. Um, yeah. So really cool stuff. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Yeah. So a couple of final reminders, uh, for everyone, we've got a, an Olympian coming to share with us next week. So make sure to come on back. And then we also have ice skating this Friday night, mark your calendars. Um, cause that'll be a great time. Um, that is all we got as far as messages go. Um, and if you'd bow your heads with me one more time, uh, I will pray us out and into the week. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to gather together tonight, Lord, and to bring glory to you. Uh, Lord, I pray that, <clears throat> that, that we can remember that you made us. You know our hearts, our true desires. And Lord, I pray that we can know that you and only you offer us the joy we need uh, to run this race of life. Lord, I pray that we can jump into the pool, jump into your arms and stop holding on to the sand, uh, stop holding on to the side of the pool, thinking that we know what's best. But Lord, to trust you and your open arms, uh, knowing that you made us and you know our hearts, you know our deepest desires. I pray that we don't get caught up in the earthly race, um, but the race of eternity, Lord, um, because the ultimate prize is you. The crowns we work so hard for, Lord, they won't last forever. And Lord, lastly, I just pray that what we learn tonight, um, that, that it won't uh, stay here, that we can take it with us as we go into the world this week, Lord, and just um, bring glory to you in all that we do. It's in the Son's holy, magnificent name that we pray. Amen. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, uh, everyone who came out tonight. Um, yeah. First virtual AIA in the books. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for coming out. Good work. Good work.